You more gray gray fi di tao. What's up guys? How you guys doing today? With the release of Old Screenscape on Steam, I wanted to make a video talking about how to set up your client and set up your RuneScape experience to be the best it possibly can be. Uh, this is going to be a little bit of a different introductory video. I feel like there's a ton of videos out there, uh, you know, describing to players what's the first things they should do, maybe the first quest they should do, whatever it may be. Uh, but I kind of wanted to make a new a new video for people who are going to be absorbing the game in a very different way, I guess, for most players. They're going to be downloading it from Steam, which means you will be playing the game on the baseline client. Now, the baseline client for RuneScape is, uh, to be quite honest, really bad. <laughs> it makes the game very, very hard to play and really, really hard to stomach, at least in my opinion. Uh, the majority of the player base uses a client called RuneLite. The link for it will be down in the description box, and you'll also see it on the screen right now. Uh, RuneLite is a third-party client that allows you to play the game with much more quality of life features, from making the game look better, increasing its draw distance, uh, to having a quest helper, to being able to help you organize your bank, organize your ta uh, organize your inventory, help you see drops on the floor, whatever it may be, RuneLite's got you covered. It is an amazing, amazing app. And I want to make sure that there's some content out there so people are able to see how to like truly enjoy the game and really get the most they can out of uh, RuneScape. All right, guys. So the first setting I find that is the one of the most important and uh, probably one of the best uh, plugins for RuneLite is the GPU plugin. So you're going to want to just click the little wrench here and you're going to do this for all of your plugins. You could just search them through uh, typing your name. So GPU, just click the little cogwheel. Now, what this allows you to do is allows you to add anti-aliasing. Uh, it allows you to add some isotropic filtering. It allows you to also, most importantly, increase the draw distance of the game. So if you're playing RuneScape right now on, or Old School RuneScape on Steam using the baseline client, uh, your draw distance is essentially going to be uh, probably like, you're like spit at how far it is. It's, it's very, very short. It's probably like somewhere around like where this lamp is or something on my screen right now. Um, it has an insanely low draw distance. And for me, I feel like that was always something that was really unappealing to get into the game. Um, the GPU setting makes it that I, I actually just can't play without this. It's available now on OS X and Windows. Um, this is the most important thing to turn up. Turn your draw distance all the way up as long as your computer can handle it. Uh, but like, yeah, it makes the game so much easier to look at. Uh, the other thing that you probably notice as well, talking about like the visuals, is I actually have a blue skybox. So instead of having the black abyss that most players have, or I guess that like the baseline client has, my skybox is actually blue. And the reason it is like that is because of the skybox feature. So skybox allows you to uh, change the color from black to pretty much whatever color you prefer. I have it just set to the default color. The default color is this kind of like, you know, perfect blue, baby blue sky color. Uh, I haven't messed with it past that. You guys can change it to whatever the hell you, you prefer with the Skybox uh, plugin. But as long as you enable it, you'll have this nice blue backdrop and so it won't feel like uh, you're at the edge of the planet every single time. <laughs> you're walking you're, you're walking on your RuneScape and you actually, like, it looks like it's daytime and it's nice. And this MMO was made, you know, more a little bit more recently. <laughs> Alright, so the uh, next plugin is called Tile Indicators. You're going to want to enable this as a new player. Uh, you might not find too much use for it just because um, you're not really doing any bossing, kind of just doing quests and stuff. Uh, but it is extremely useful and you're going to be using it a shit ton in your RuneScape career uh, because it lets you mark the floor. I don't know if you notice here, but I have little yellow squares. And you can change it to any color you prefer. Uh, but I have little yellow squares on these yew trees. And you could do this in boss rooms. You can do this uh, for pretty much anywhere in the world. And it helps you distinguish, you know, let's say you need to know what the maximum range of your crossbow of your of your weapon is. That allows you to, you know, know where you could just put a line or put a box wherever wherever that max distance is. Uh, maybe you need to know uh, where, like, let's say if how many, let's say some bosses will have a mechanic where they'll do splash damage, uh, like two squares from where wherever it lands. So you'll set a marker in the middle of the room, wherever it is in the room, and you'll just stand there. Whenever the boss does his mechanic, you can walk two squares away, wait for it to land, and then walk back into it. It has a ton of uses. It's extremely useful. You'll find a million ways to find to, to use this. Uh, and it's great to like, you know, have installed at the beginning. All you do is you shift click on a tile. You'll be given the option to mark a tile and there it is. And if you end up marking the wrong tile or, it, or you know, uh, you not you don't longer find it useful to have that tile mark, you don't kind of want it on your UI. You can just unmark it and it's gone forever. So it's something to get used to. I would highly, highly recommend you guys check out Tile Indicator. It's like one of the most useful uh, like plugins you'll have in, uh, in all of OSRS. All right, so this next one is something that is, again, a little bit more for later on in the game, but it is good to get into the habit right out of the gate. Uh, it's actually called key remapping. Now, key remapping allows you to, you know, obviously, listen, I spoiler alert, but it allows you to remap your keys. 
<laughs> and the reason I personally like it a lot is because it allows you to set your F keys to using your 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, whatever, just your number keys, right? Uh, the reason that's useful is because in the more challenging content in RuneScape, you're not going to want to be clicking your bag, clicking your prayer, clicking your spell book, clicking your gear, whatever it is. You're going to want to have all that stuff key bound because, you know, although this is a 600 year old game and the beginning of it is a lot of standing in a spot and kind of AFKing something. Uh, the content in RuneScape actually gets quite challenging and it actually becomes uh, very, very unforgiving actually. Um, so you're going to want to get used to using your hotkeys right out of the gate. So what I like to do is I just enable remap F keys and then I leave it, you know, in its normal settings. And then within the game itself, I'll go to my uh, settings and I'll go down to keybinds. And then in here, I'll actually set my keybind. So if let's say my prayer is set to two, so I'll set it to F2 in the keybinds tab. And now whenever I'm in game and I click two, I get my prayer, one, I get my backpack, three, I get my spell book, four, I get my combat styles, and five, I get my equipped gear. Now you guys can set this up however you want, but I just personally find this really useful because I don't really like stretching my hand all the way up to the F keys. It feels like my big sweaty hands just like kind of like eating my entire keyboard and it doesn't feel really good. I just prefer to use number keys. It's like every other MO on the planet uses number keys. <laughs> uh, so I just find it way, way more comfortable and I'm sure uh, there's a lot of you out there who probably feel the same way. All right, so this next one is a really, really big one. It's called stretched mode. What this allows you to do is it allows you to stretch out different parts of your interface. Um, now, there's a lot of customiz customizability in with your interface in old school RuneScape. Uh, you're gonna notice a lot of streamers and YouTubers use the layout I'm using right now, which is the classic layout. Um, I started, I actually switched this uh, when I started getting into the game more. I feel like it was, at first I, I, so when I would watch other people use it, I would find it a little bit claustrophobic, like a little kind of like tight. Uh, but I started doing the harder content of the game it was actually when I was doing fight caves. I tried out, I tried doing it in my in like classic mode, like how it is now, and I feel like the game is way better to play in this layout for some reason. It just feels easier to keep track of everything, just between my menus, whatever it may be. Uh, but you're gonna notice if in the settings here, you know, you set yourself to classic layout without stretch mode, this is what the game looks like. <laughs> it's uh, it's you know, it's not very pog champ. You know what I mean? It's 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 pretty un uh, unpleasant. So what stretch mode allows you to do in the classic layout is that it allows you to stretch it out. Everything will be a little bit thicker, uh, but you actually get a full screen experience. So when you're playing the game, it's looking clean. You know, you get, you're actually using your entire monitor opposed to just having some tiny, tiny, tiny little window. Uh, the other thing that's great about it is let's say you don't want to play in classic layout. Let's say you're like, hey, I don't want to play RuneScape like it's 2008. Not a problem, dude. You got the uh, more the, the newer layout, so there's the classic layout and then the modern layout. Uh, out of the two, I'm personally leaning towards more the classic, like modern layout. I don't know how you, what you would call this, um, but by default, if I'm not mistaken, the UI is actually quite small when you're using this this layout. So that could be kind of annoying because let's say if you have a really small layout uh, and you're trying to jump between your inventory and your prayers and trying to perfect or whatever and you're trying to kill stuff, it could be kind of annoying. There's some people who want that middle ground where they like that. Let's say in the classic layout, everything is like really big and really easy to click. Um, but they want to have the game in full screen. They don't want to be have the entire game world in that tiny little box, right? Which is totally normal. I think that's a thing that most people probably feel. What you can do is you can actually scale up the UI, which is really, really nice. You can make it as big or as small as you like. And uh, this is like super helpful because I mean, at least for me, if ever I want to play the game in this setting, I actually like the big boxes. I like the big UI. I like the big mini map. Chat can really, I'm not, you know, whatever, I guess you're a big chat, but you could just, you could just hide it, you know what I mean? It's not a big deal. <laughs> and uh, it makes it a lot easier to like use the interface, interact with it while still keeping track of, you know, bosses or enemies, whatever it may be that you're uh, fighting. All right, guys, this next one might be a little controversial. I don't know how people feel about this one. Uh, I personally love it. Um, but a thing for anyone who's new to Old School Escape that you'll realize quickly is that um, stuff like this sometimes ruffles people's feathers the wrong way, but I find this super fucking helpful. It's actually called the quest helper. So this won't be, I believe it won't be in your default, uh, in your default uh, plugin tab. You're gonna have to go to the plugin hub and you don't have to really worry about this. But it's essentially nothing here is like malicious software or anything. Um, but they don't, sometimes things that are like a little bit newer or haven't been tested to work perfectly with RuneLite are put here. I've never had any troubles with anything from the plugin hub. Uh, but you just have to go here, type in quest helper. You'll see it here, I already have it installed, but you just go type in quest helper and you'll find it. You just install it. And what this does is it actually makes questing a thousand times easier. Now, the quest and RuneScape, in my opinion, are some of my favorite, is some of my favorite content to do in the game. Uh, there aren't really any, like, and I'm sure you've heard this, but there aren't any, like, kill boar quests in RuneScape. There's no, like, you know, slay 20 chickens quests. It's, all the quests are, like, legitimate adventures, and I find that um, an amazing part of old school RuneScape. Uh, and as a new player, you're going to be doing a ton of quests to start out with. 
uh, some of the best XP at the beginning is actually just from doing quests. You know, it's quests like Waterfall Quest, which is House. There's a ton of things you guys are going to be doing right out of the gate uh, that are like super, super important, and you're going to want to get done as easily as possible. Now, a lot of people would use the wiki before the quest hopper was released, uh, but this allows you to just, let's say, click a quest. It'll show you what you need. If there's any quest requirements or any uh, skill requirements, it'll let you know. Let's say, from like Exiles, you'll see there's a, you know, I'm missing some of my sat requirements. Uh, I'm missing a quest requirement, so it'll be in red. And then it just shows you every single item you need for the quest as well. So as you put them into your inventory, uh, they'll turn from red to green, and it'll even be white. If, let's say, it knows that you have it in your bank, the item will actually be in white, and it'll then it'll turn to green whenever you put it in your inventory. Uh, and it's great because it'll give you a guide on what to do. On your actual map, it'll highlight where you need to go. And when you actually get near the location, it'll actually highlight any NPCs you need to talk to, any items you need to interact with, whatever it is you need to do. If there's items in your inventory that you need to interact with each other, it'll highlight them for you. Um, in conversation, let's say there's a lot of quests where when you're talking to an NPC, you have to spe uh, choose specific dialogue options. Uh, instead of having to figure out, you know, jumping between the wiki and the game and the wiki and the game, you can just go through the game super simply, just kind of absorb the lore, absorb the quest, kind of just enjoy it. And it'll tell you which dialogue options to pick in order to, you know, progress the quest, whatever it may be. This is an insanely helpful plugin. I would highly recommend it, especially to all of the new players coming from Steam. Um, it's going to make questing be go from being kind of, you know, there's a lot of people feel like questing is kind of cantrous and not really big on it. Uh, to being a super enjoyable, super streamlined experience that uh, really kind of gets you invested in the game. And I'm telling you, some of the writing in RuneScape, I mean, you know, a lot of it, listen, it's a little bit cheesy, but it's it's just, it's freaking awesome. Like, it's actually awesome. I highly, highly recommend you guys uh, get the quest helper. All right, so the last one I'd like to touch on is inventory tags and inventory grids. Uh, so what this allows you to do, inv inventory tags is simple. Your inventory actually has 28 slots and you could actually click in the middle of two slots or four slots, whatever it may be. And it kind of doesn't go anywhere. And this is going to happen a lot to you. This was actually, I think, the second plugin I installed after the GPU plugin uh, when I started playing RuneScape. It is really annoying and really frustrating when you're trying to move things around and it doesn't go into the proper box. And this kind of gets you trained to see where the boxes actually are in your inventory screen. And so they'll never, you won't really run into the issue where you'll try moving something and it just doesn't move. Uh, inventory tags, I don't, I personally have not been using recently, but what it does is that it'll highlight gear. So let's say if you take a piece of gear off and it's in your inventory, um, there are a lot of situations, let's say in the game, where you're going to be, you know, wearing multiple sets of armor. It'll be like, you'll be bringing, let's say, range gear and melee gear or mage gear and melee gear or whatever it is. And what you can do is you'll outline it with a specific color. And so you'll know, let's say when you're doing a swap, let's say bosses will like swap, like what kind of, what kind of damage type they, uh, they're going to be able to be weak to. Uh, you'll switch, to, let's say, to your milligear, and all your milligear will be outlined in red. So you just like click, 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 and you know that if all the red pieces are out of your inventory, you know that all of your milligear is on you. Uh, it's really, really useful. I don't use it much right now. It is something that I plan on using in the future. Uh, but if anything, do make sure to download inventory grids. It is super helpful, super, super, like, just... is. It's going to save you a lot of frustration because when I first started playing, and I was like, I'm like, where the hell is the box? Sometimes you'll, like, you'll like move something and it just isn't very obvious or it won't move and you'll be like, why is it not moving? It, it, it's very, very frustrating. So I would highly, highly recommend you guys uh, also get inventory, uh, inventory grid. All right, guys. So that's going to be, we're coming to the end of the video right now. And I just wanted to put in a extra spicy bonus meme for anyone who stuck with me to the end of the video. Um, when you're starting out in RuneScape, traveling around the world, it's a pretty big world. It's a lot of running. You don't got a lot of energy. You don't want to be fucking walking around the world. It's a bad time. The best advice I ever got uh, while playing OSRS is to use World 330. Now, to explain what this means, uh, Old School RuneScape is not like other MMOs where your character is locked to a specific server. In RuneScape, there, you're allowed to jump from server to server, and there's actually servers set up uh, for specific things. If you want to do specific events like a raid or specific activities, uh, or have social gatherings, which are called house parties. Now, you would jump to wor World 330, and when you get here, uh, I'm just jumping in right now. When you get here, there's going to be a bunch of people. And what it allows you to do is it allows you to use other people's houses for anything that houses give you benefit for, whether it be to heal yourself, heal your stats, restore prayer energy, all that stuff, uh, teleport around the entire world, or even pray on an altar to, uh, your, like, you know, to level up your prayer using bones. It is super useful. It is a great way to get around the world. Um, what you're going to want to do to set this up properly is you're going to want to set, whenever you get your house, it's not very expensive to just get a house. It's not very difficult to get that pretty early on. You're going to want to set your house to Remington. And what that allows you to do is that whenever you use a house party, uh, or sorry, a, a teleport house uh, tablet, which should look like this, or a teleport house spell when you reach mage level uh, 40, it'll teleport you right over here. There's going to be a bunch of people. There's going to be a ton of people advertising their houses, <laughs> advertising like 
a bunch of like you know illegal activities like uh in front of us of cage cells and whatever the hell it is but you just ignore all that stuff you just come to this little uh, house advertisement thing you click any house that you want let me get this quest helper thing out of the way here real quick you go to whichever house you want let's say let's go to this guy mox he seemed like a cool dude you go in there's gonna be a bunch of players in here and what's great is that you're gonna be able to use any of the teleports in their uh ornate jewelry box so any of the jewelry teleports, if you need to go to any of the guilds, any of the towns that are linked to this, any of the mini games, it's like it's just it's so much easier to get around. Uh, if you need to restore your stats, you want to heal your health, prayer, run energy, your spec energy, whatever it is, you just hit the rejuvenation pool. Uh, you can also come over here to their teleport nexus. Their teleport nexus is going to have a list of like every TP in the game. Um, it's I can't begin to describe how helpful this is. Use World 330. Construction is probably one of the most useful skills in the game, but also one of the most expensive. Um, you're going to be using World 330 a lot. At first, you're going to love this world. And then you'll grow to, you'll grow to hate it a little bit because it's always so freaking full. Uh, but this is the, one of the most important things you need to learn about as early as possible when playing Old School Escape is about World 330. So get in there. Use the fuck out of other people's houses. Be a leech. It's all good. <laughs> but thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today. I do hope you guys uh, found the video helpful. If you did, please leave a like. Also, if you guys enjoy my content, I make a lot of old school RuneScape content, I make a lot of content on a bunch of different things, please be sure to subscribe. If you guys have any comments, any concerns, any questions, leave them down in the comment section down below. Uh, you guys can also talk to me directly uh, whenever I'm streaming. I stream five days a week on Twitch, uh, every day between uh, every day except for Sundays and Mondays, starting at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. There's going to be a link down below for that as well. If you guys are interested, you can hit me with a follow. You'll be notified of whenever I'm live. And yeah, I would like to welcome all the new OSRS players, if whether you come from Steam or you just found the game randomly like that. I do hope you guys are enjoying the game. I hope you guys are having a good time in Old School RuneScape. I hope this was helpful and have an awesome day, guys. Peace.